Hey everyone, Hybrid Toy Reviews here, back after a little break with a new Star Wars The Black Series action figure review. Today I have the Dark Trooper from Star Wars The Mandalorian, the newest deluxe figure in the lineup. Super cool figure. Got two of them in the mail today from Amazon. Some pre-orders finally came through, and I'm super excited to review it for you. But before we get there, since you are clearly a Mandalorian fan, I think there's something you need to know about. When this channel hits a thousand subscribers, we are very nearly there. I will be giving away this Mandalorian Heavy Artillery Stormtrooper. He's hard to come by. He was a former Amazon exclusive, and he could be in your collection. When I hit 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to put up a thanks for 1,000 subscribers video, and it'll be where you can enter the drawing. It'll just be a random comment generator type situation. Comment on that video, and one lucky person will win the Heavy Artillery Stormtrooper. So keep an eye out for that, and if you'd like a shot to be in it, Click subscribe. Every one of you that does that gets us there that much quicker. We're nearly there. We're what, 15 away? Let's do that. Anyway, let's get into the review of The Mandalorian Dark Trooper. If you've been around here a while, you know how this goes. We always start by taking a look at the packaging. This is your standard Black Series packaging, the deluxe variant, where it is a wider version of the Galaxy packaging. You got your Star Wars The Black Series logo up top. A big window showing the figure and his accessories off nicely. Star Wars The Mandalorian and that burnt orange color across the front. Dark Trooper and that burnt orange. Warning 4 Plus Hasbro. Got some cool artwork of the Dark Trooper on the side of the box. Walking down the hallway, flanked by others behind him. Also says Dark Trooper at the bottom. This side of the box just features a wraparound window, wraparound orange stripe, and Black Series logo. Back of the box features a zoomed-in look at that side art, just looking really cool. This is probably some of my favorite Black Series art so far. You got your Black Series logo, his name again, a bio in varying languages. Pause and read whichever language best applies to you. He's number 28 in the Mandalorian lineup. Bunch of legalese underneath with some Disney and Hasbro logos again. More legalese with a barcode. Top of the box features a hanger tab and then a window, which allows some light to get in from the top, which honestly is just a really nice way to let it kind of look a little better in the packaging if you're an inbox guy. I'm not an inbox guy. I open everything I buy. So let's go ahead and cut to my open one. Rest assured, this will be opened later, though. So here's the Dark Trooper out of the box, and as always, we'll start by taking a look at our accessories. So first main accessory is his big blaster, and this is a new mold for the Black Series. It's not been used anywhere else, as it should be. It's a new gun from the Mandalorian. I really like the look of this. It's almost sort of like a sawed-off, pump-action sort of shotgun. At least the vibes are. I really like that little splash of silver on it. Otherwise, it's in a very nice kind of gunmetal y gray. really do like all the details, the little banana clip on the side. I also like how the camera won't focus. That's always a super key part of these, right? But it looks really good. He, in the box, has a trigger hand on the right hand. And his left hand is sculpted in a sort of a gun-holding, you know, pose. They are right-handed droids, or at least present in that way. So, he holds the gun rather well. Taking that aside, he comes with some swappable hands, which never happens in Black Series. As I mentioned, trigger hand, gun-holding hand, he comes with a pair fisted hands, which look really good. Let's run through swapping those. So, swapping these is pretty easy. You just pull the hand, and unlike many action figure hands, the peg is not part of the hand. The peg comes out of the arm. So, the peg stays on the arm side, and you just work the hand onto that peg. Works out very nicely. Let's go ahead and set both of them on. There we go. Two fisted hands to recreate that end of the main fight scene where they're trying to punch through the door onto the Star Destroyer cruiser bridge. So that's a super cool look and nice that we have those as well. As a final accessory, he comes with a pair of these blast effects, which look really cool. They are basically identical to each other and look nice. They feature sort of like a ball-shaped peg, I notice, on these. So... These peg into the holes on the bottom of the feet to give him that thrust effect, like when they kidnapped Grogu, you know, in the middle of Season 2. Um, I guess in the second half of Season 2. One thing is because that peg is sort of like ball-shaped, 
you can kind of pivot it around. Not really sure that's a feature I super care about. Kind of wish they would kind of be in a static straight position. Not the end of the world. You just put them in and line them up straight and it works fine. Um, so, I mean, I guess, I mean, there might be some application for this. I don't know. Looking out to the sides or something as he's landing. I don't know. It looks weird to me. Setting him down. Setting the accessories off to the side. Let me just bring him up close and raise the camera here. Give you a look at this head sculpt, maybe in a less attitude giving position. This Dark Trooper head sculpt is just stellar. The glossy black plastic really works. The red for the eyes just stands out. It's not super bright, but it's not dark. It's not matte or anything. It's got a little gloss to it. And just the whole figure, I gotta say, this guy is a fingerprint magnet because this black plastic is just high gloss. I, uh, Really do like the look of it, though. But yeah, definitely a figure you want to wash your hands before you touch. And even then, you're going to be leaving prints. But that helmet just looks amazing. Working down from the helmet, you have his torso armor. One thing that I like is that these shoulder pads feature articulation. Where there's a peg on the back and on the front. So it'll kind of like rock up and down out of the way of the arm articulation. I find that when the arms are down, it's best to come through and just push them down. I think that makes it look more natural. So it looks good. And you got the four red buttons on the chest with some other controls in black. I really like the waist pistons and just gears. And I love it when Star Wars droids show you the inner workings like that. You can maybe get a little bit of a different look with how this torso thing moves. You can see kind of, it's kind of dark in here, but the uh, you can see around the uh, torso overlay, there is sculpt work going on through underneath. So you get below these abdomen pistons and you get what looks like a sort of normal stormtrooper belt. You got that grenade looking thing on the back and all the pouches. Not really sure why a dark trooper needs pouches, but the dark trooper has pouches. The arms look really good. I like how they did with the K2SO droids where the uh, pins on the joints are clear to kind of simulate, you know, that they are hollow like they are in the show. So it looks really good. They do the same for the knees and the ankles. This guy's just really awesome. Just high gloss black with bits of silver punched in. Just a tiny bit of red to make him look extra menacing. I'm really, really, really happy with how this guy turned out. Just a very... Very good representation of what is seen on screen in The Mandalorian. And a really just fun looking action figure. I gotta say, they do have they do have a presence. To run through some articulation, I gotta say, for this big bulky guy, I wasn't sure how it was gonna work out. But Hasbro usually impresses me with the droids on this line, especially these Mandalorian droids. And sure enough, they've impressed me here. He features a double barbell. For the head, which is standard, allows him to look all the way up. That's awesome for flying poses. He can bury his chin. The arms can come all the way up to a T pose. There is a butterfly joint, 360 at the shoulder, although you do have to kind of bring it out a bit to get around that shoulder pad. There's no upper bicep swivel, but that butterfly joint helps there. It features single jointed elbows, and they rotate at the upper point of the elbow and not the lower point. The wrists, though, rotate at the where the wrist meets the forearm and then at the hand so right now both hands have an up and down hinge but if you need to go in and out you turn the entire wrist joint and now you have in and out this is the best of both worlds you like never get that option of course it's because he's a droid with a particular design aesthetic that allows that but still i love that it features a mid torso ball joint allows him to crunch pretty far forward a little bit back Side to side, pretty wide, and rotation, of course. The legs can kick out that far. Not as far as some, but it's really good. His legs can kick that far forward. That far back, he features an upper thigh rotation, which actually reveals some mechanical sculpting in there, which is awesome. He features single jointed knees that can't quite make 90, a little bit too bulky, but the knee rotates at the thigh, and then it rotates at the top of the calf, so the knee features a double pin. His feet don't rotate at the ankle, but the feet can point straight down, pretty far forward, 
and there's a forward facing pin for rocker allowing for some really wide rock i mean he can get some really really wide stances with both feet flat on the ground so that is definitely a plus with this guy to do some size comparisons let's bring in the jetta patrol trooper otherwise just the same size as a normal stormtrooper for an adversary we'll bring in the mandalorian for his boss i have the credit collection gideon which is the same gideon just blue and for one of mando's raider pals how about fennec shand as you can see the dark trooper towers over all of them as he should and honestly i'm really happy with how this looks it just it fits it looks good so end of the day what do i think of the deluxe dark trooper i i love this guy he looks so cool the articulation is stellar the likeness to what was seen on screen is stellar you know i gotta be honest it sucks when we have to wait a year and a half after something has happened to finally get the figure from it but this is obviously a case of Disney not telling Hasbro that the Dark Troopers were going to be in the show and it was a big surprise just like Luke Skywalker was a big surprise and you know you get that like year a little over a year turnaround time on a new figure but the benefit is is that then they don't have to go off of concept art they have what you actually see on the show to work with. This guy looks so good. He has nothing inaccurate about him as far as I can tell. I really like what I'm seeing here. He's a lot of fun to pose. He has the perfect accessories. Do I think he's a good deluxe figure? You know, he's one of the better ones. He's not huge, huge compared to other figures, but he is 100% new sculpt. You can't really use the paint argument, because honestly, it's not glossy black paint. It's glossy black plastic. So really, all the paint you have is anything that's red and silver on this guy. So, like, the paint budget is limited, but clearly it is 100% new sculpt that has more or less zero reusability potential other than the credit collection that they're going to do, and they're not going to do a carbonized because that line's confirmed dead. So, you know, I'm giving them a pass on him being deluxe. He's not the most egregious we've had. I don't mind spending the $35 on him. Or what was it? It was like $32.99 or something. However, the pricing ended up being on this guy. It's not the worst thing they've tried to pull with their deluxe line. So, do I recommend the Mandalorian Dark Trooper? Absolutely, 100%. I think your collection isn't complete without at least one on the shelf. I, as mentioned, had to spring for a second one. I think I'm okay with a pair. Just a pair to flank Moff Gideon. I think that's the the way to go here. I could totally see people going for, you know, like six or more, you know, for a hallway diorama. At 35 bucks, it's a little steep for me to do more than two these days. But I'm really happy with it. I think you're going to be happy with it. Go track him down. He's starting to hit some retailers here in the United States. He's going to be pretty readily available, but don't sleep on him. I think this is one where once he's gone, he's going to be a more expensive aftermarket figure. That's my speculation here. So get him. Enjoy him. I am sure am myself. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. As I mentioned, we are doing that Artillery Stormtrooper giveaway at 1,000 subscribers. We are very nearly there. You guys will see a video talking about how to do that when the time comes. I'm going to go work on some other videos now. Thanks again. Until next time, may the Force be with each and every one of you. Bye.